welcome to another episode of the 72 Pink Connector. With us this week, we have Full Boat. Tom. Hi. Josh. Hey. And Adam. Hello. So, um, this is nice. We have all of us. Um, I think it's the first show we've had all of us in a little bit. Yeah, holidays are brutal. (laughs) That'll do it. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, this is nice. Um, What you guys been up to? All right, I'm not going to split hairs. I'm not going to wait about it. I'm just going to jump right in. I didn't even prep you guys for the hardest of the hardcore topics. It's the end of the year. We're going to do this one strong. Oh, God. How how do you feel about breakfast foods outside of the breakfast hours? We're talking breakfast for lunch and breakfast for dinner. Absolutely. Silly question. Any time right? of day is any time, all times of day. Breakfast, breakfast food. food is Agreed. food. It is best guys, food. I, Honestly, I had. I'm, I'm in. I am in the realm of any food is appropriate for any time of day. <laughs> like within reason, steak I think, dinner for breakfast. Who cares? Pizza for breakfast. Think, who cares? That's the only thing. Okay, so dinner, so so when I get to when I get to breakfast any food for breakfast that's where there's a slight separation i can't do and not that i wouldn't do like i would have a, a steak burger for breakfast if i could but i don't think my body can handle that because mm-hmm. <laughs> if i have something like really terrible for me in the morning my day is ruined it's like I've been, like like super spicy food i think falls outside of the realm of breakfast for me. I can't do spicy in the morning. Are you kidding? Spicy Tabasco, lunch and dinner? Tabasco on eggs I don't know. Is I, think, a I think that would wake you up. Dude. I yeah. actually yeah. have... Okay, so, in the morning. Yeah, spicy, I have spicy. Every, anytime I go anywhere, I'm like, can I get jalapenos on that? Yes, put jalapenos on that. Like... <laughs> Yeah, even much. if it's a breakfast like breakfast sandwich, like I'm gonna have a jalapeno bagel with pepper jack cheese, and if you can yeah. add jalapenos, please do. Dude, I put hot <laughs> sauce on my eggs almost all the time. Absolutely, I I have never been that. I'm like the basic egg guy. Like, give me eggs, maybe add some cheddar cheese if you're scrambling them. But other than that, just give me <laughs> eggs, salt, pepper, done. Nice. What? So for lunch today? You gotta have garlic. You have to have basil. You have to put a little bit of pa- smoked paprika in. Oh man! The, Damn, the you're going all in on your eggs. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> I like my eggs, man. I actually just it's got so done with it. Just today, it should speak went, for itself. I bought a dozen eggs. I think Gina had about two, and that dozen's gone. <laughs> Did Damn. you ever? Do you ever see that cool video of? Um, of like it was like a like a Japanese market. They're like making this egg, and they're like they have a little box, and then they pour the egg in, and like folding it over and over, making these like little tofu square looking things. What? It's really cool, and I just really want to make eggs like that. I'll, I'll post the link in Discord at some point. But it's really cool, and he keeps folding, and he's adding egg, and he's like lifting it up, and like putting more stuff in there. It's really, it looks delicious, and I need it. <laughs> I need it in my life. So for lunch today, we got a big loaf of sourdough, which is kind of problematic because it doesn't go nicely into a toaster. And we wanted sourdough toast. So I did the worst hack job cutting this thing up. We had like like little weird sections of tiny sourdough toast. Uh, <laughs> eggs over easy, made with uh, butter and bacon grease, of course, because that's how you do it. Uh, right. Bacon. And we had some, oh, hash browns. We, we got like nice. little frozen hash brown squares and it was fucking delicious, man. Have you ever put, okay, here's a weird question. Have you ever put like made, you made top ramen, right? You've made just normal top oh, ramen. Oh yeah. Have you ever yeah. applied bacon into your top ramen? Bacon, no. Eggs, yes. So I was watching this thing. There's a whole YouTube series this guy does, and he's like, I'm obsessed with Top Ramen. He's a chef, right? But he loves <laughs> Top Ramen. It's his guilty pleasure. So he's huh. like, I could do better than this. And he has a whole series about like elevating Top Ramen like <laughs> into like this high end like kind of dish. And it's really cool. He makes his own ramen. He makes his own broth, his own seasoning everything dude and then he's like he's, and he's showing you like little simple hacks too to like elevate your because normal like ramen places they'll add like pork you know like pork shoulder i think it is mm-hmm. they add it into your ramen dish and uh he's like but i just add bacon because it's easier so he like cuts it up and he puts he like fries the bacon <laughs> up and he tosses it in there i had it recently really good it's really good just do hmm. it to be fair you could do a lot with uh top ramen because it's just a little packet of cheap noodles 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know they were deep fried. Or not use that little seasoning packet or whatever. That's where all that's where all the sodium and the the other whatever else they put I, into that is I didn't yeah, I didn't realize that the fattiness, like the the bad for you comes from the noodles, not from the broth. Yeah. Because they actually deep fry the noodles. I had no I like I don't know what I how I thought the noodles got all crispy and hard, but like I had no idea they actually deep fried those noodles. And like I actually watched like how it's made. I'm like, oh, oh. Huh. So it's all deep fried. I'm like it's great. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and then I would just boil it, throw it in with instant potatoes, and douse it with hot sauce. So that's why that was a very bad diet Ooh. choice in college. Damn, oh, that's not hella good. <laughs> yeah. it does it does it sounds... Instant potatoes. It was beef and noodles without oh, actual Jesus. beef and with oh, goddamn man. awful noodles. <laughs> That's, that sounds amazing. I totally eat that. I I, <laughs> so I like sad. really good food, but I also like really shitty food. I don't know. Maybe it's a contrast thing. <laughs> you know? You have to you be gotta, well-rounded. <laughs> yeah. got to take the bow with the good. Otherwise, the yeah. good's not going to taste as good. Yeah. Well, and you also have to take your uh, food with your cheap when you're poor. Right, exactly. So uh, that, that was more yeah, so yeah. the issue back then. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> uh. Yeah, nothing like a ten cent pack of noodles to get you going. Okay, so uh, <laughs> but other, you, we, other than food, how have you guys been? Good, good, busy. Christmas Lying. was good. Holidays. This was easy. Christmas was yeah, not easy. So easy. Christmas is never easy. <laughs> Ever. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yours Christmas was easy for me. You have to fly across the country for Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> yours is a bit different than everyone yeah. else's. Mine's. I, I was my Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I went. I was there five days or five days yeah. that weren't flying. Uh, or six days that weren't flying, four of them were Christmases. Nice. <laughs> in Jesus, Columbus, man. I didn't... Probably, like, all, like, over probably, what, 600 miles driven during that time? Also? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck that. And then I got in a fucking car accident. I got sideswiped what? in Columbus. Oh, no. Burnout IRL. Did you get the high score? Um, no. Uh, but I did get <laughs> oh. a free play because it wasn't my fault, bitches. No, yeah, uh, just there you uh, go. This older lady just kind of comes over and hits me. Um, I thought she was pulling away, so we got a quick picture. But she just came up, she's like, "I'm sorry, it's my fault." I'm like, "Well, this is gonna be easy." So at least that was okay. How how old was she? Uh, seventy. <laughs> should she? Okay. She confessed. Say, should should been, she have been driving? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was fine. She seems okay. very good in the mind, but it was funny. Okay. She actually <laughs> said, um. To the sheriff, I've never been cited for an incident, and I've been driving since I've been 12. And the sheriff's like, <laughs> what? Wait, since you've been I'm 12? I'm about to cite you for another one. He's like, driving <laughs> age is 16. She's like, yeah, but I've been driving since I was 12. And he's just kind of standing there like, is she like telling me this? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was okay. like, wow, okay. But yeah. Well, people I'll, don't give a shit. I did get one I- really cool present, though. Uh, my oh, yeah. grandma always finds these gadgets, like these weird gadgets, gadgets that most of the time are really goofy, but sometimes are really nice. She got mm-hmm. me an electric mandolin. Oh, what? And that so, sounds sick. Okay, okay. Uh, let me um, specify mandolin. The, the cooking mandolin. The cooking mandolin. The yes. So oh. an electric mandolin would be pretty sweet, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have yeah. been so much better. I play the electric mandolin. I was like really like hyped for a second. <laughs> But so yeah, like I'm literally <laughs> feeding these potatoes into this thing, and it's just like cubing them up for me in no time flat. So that's why I made the eggs by the dozen because I made it with hash browns because it was awesome. Nice. But yeah. What about you guys? Any fun stuff from Christmas? Like I uh, I didn't leave my house for five days. Nice. Nice. It was that's wonderful. <laughs> um. Well, I had the whole week off work. That was awesome. And Christmas was really easy because I went to two Christmases. And both Christmases had a total of five people each. Oh, Oh, nice. (laughs) I have a somewhat small family, and it's really, really easy. That's good. But sometimes it's nice, though, because it gets to be intimate. Like, for ours, it's like, it's, we do four. So we, but there's like a whole bunch of people at each one. So, like. So it's not like you don't really get a lot of time yeah. with everybody. So, and nice. I'm not big on yeah. these. So, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'll see you next year. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Next. Okay. And then it's like a sprint the whole way through. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm used to big family gatherings. Like my Thanksgiving is always probably about 20, 30 people. And the same with Damn. one of my Christmases because my grandpa had three kids and they all had a lot and they had a lot. <laughs> and I mean, that's just my grandpa. So it'd be my first cousins and first cousins once removed. That's the entire group. And it's still 20 to 30. Oh, so okay. All, we're all, we're just a really tight knit family too. When it comes to that, which is awesome. I love the big family stuff. That's cool. Nice. Not everybody's into that, but that's cool. Yeah. But that uh, said, uh, yeah. Adam, you had a week yeah. off. Did you get any gaming in during that week? I did get some gaming in during that week. What so, kind of gaming? some good stuff, actually. Um, <laughs> I started getting into Hollow Knight more. Oh, uh, Hollow Knight. Uh, yeah, I bought that. When did I buy that? It must have been a couple of months ago now. I played it a little bit. It's really hard. Um, I didn't. It kind of caught me, and then I kind of lost track, and I kind of. It just flew by the wayside. So I launched it up again, and I'm starting to like figure out where I was and what I was doing, and I'm starting to get it finally. Like hmm. I, I, I get what they're doing, and it's it's an exploration game. Oh, is this? It? That's the whole. You know, initially I was frustrated because you you have a map, but you have to like each time you visit a new area, you have to buy that area's map from a a map dude, and then <laughs> the map dude, I like yeah, that. <laughs> and you can only see you can only see the parts of the map that you've been to, and then the part, and you can only see the parts on the map that you've been to after you save at a bench. So like you can go okay. completely far like way far away from your home base area or whatever. And even if you have the map for that place, you won't see where you're going. You can't tell where you're going. There's no point of reference on your map until you make your way back to a save point, And then it updates your map with the places you've been to. Oh, wow. So a huge part of the game is being completely lost. And not only are you lost, you're in a very hostile environment with uh, very tough enemies and not a lot of health. So it's mm. got that, this game is way more difficult than it looks like it would be kind of thing going on with it. Mm. Um, and it's got a little bit of that, I'm not gonna mention the game uh, aspect to it where- Oh yeah, there you go. Everything, is really, everything is really <laughs> difficult and when you die, <laughs> you have to go back to wherever you saved, which isn't very close to where you died. And then you have to fight your your shade that it creates where you died to get your money back. Otherwise, you lose that money. Oh, okay. But the game itself, I mean, I've already talked about it. I don't want to get on too much with it, but it's just a beautiful game. It is so polished. Um, I listened to the soundtrack when I went to bed the other day. It's so good. <laughs> it's so I, good. I will, even if you I will second that. Yeah, even if you don't want to play the game... Listen to the soundtrack. It is it is incredible. I so still I found wanting to play that. I haven't purchased it yet, but I really want to get yeah, into that. I own it. Time. It's sitting in my it's yeah. sitting in my games library. I have not installed it nor played it. It's one it. of those games at first glance. It's so it's got so much charm and kind of it's not real dark. Like the music is pretty and it's glowy and the art is nice and it is kind of brutal. Like it's <clears> it's it's tough. It's it'll really test you in in places. Uh, it's it's got kind of the I don't want to say the game, but it's got that <laughs> kind of, that punishing but sense of accomplishment along with it, and the sense of exploration. Smart <laughs> schmals. Yeah, I'm uh I'm waiting for <laughs> February twenty fourth twenty. Uh, wait a minute, no, it is. Never mind, it's already fucking out. Why don't I have this is yet? It? February twenty fourth twenty seventeen. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. I thought you were waiting on the Switch release. I am. Okay. Google did not understand. I said Hollow Knight Switch or release. Could, and it gave or me the you wrong could not way. wait on the Switch release and just start playing it anyway on PC. That's I true. could. Early, early 2018. I am going to buy it on the Switch because I, I want another Metroidvania uh, bus game. And mm -hmm. I think that'll scratch that itch. I'm yeah. going to second your soundtrack comment, though. Because I, I found the full OST on YouTube, hit play, and I was probably the most productive I've been programming since I got on my Doom soundtrack <laughs> way, way back when. It was wonderful. Nice. 
I bet with a substantially lower heart rate, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like most of the songs in there are really chill and kind of easy they going, are. but then like some of the battle songs, they get you yeah. moving, man. Yeah. There's a lot of like strings and piano. Uh, a lot of it's real classically influenced. It sounds like, but it's just it's just good. It's just really good and really really well produced. Um. Yeah. Hollow Knight, play it. Maybe. I'm going to play it more. I'm going to play it some more. Maybe I'll stream it sometime. That'd be a good streaming game. You should watch, stream me, watch me get lost in the wilderness and die. Yeah, I'd watch the crap out of that. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, other than Hollow Knight, played some more Battlegrounds, uh, usual stuff. Um, so, got pretty close to winning, but most of the games that I get pretty close to winning are my teammates doing really well, and I died kind of early on. <laughs> yeah, me too. I have a love hate relationship with Battlegrounds because I'm not very good at it, but that's fun. So, um, about yeah. Battlegrounds, I played my first round of it since the 1.0 this week when I got back because it launched yeah, yeah. right as I left. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's me, feel? but in the first person mode, it felt like they changed the way momentum shifts now a little bit, where before it felt to me, I hit left, I go left, I hit right, I go right instantly. Mm -hmm. Where now it feels like it's more of I hit left. If I hit right immediately, I still actually go a little bit left before I start to go right. Like the it slow your like momentum lag. and then come back to the right. Yeah, um, I haven't noticed I've never that had that. Long. Yeah, It you feels the same to me as it always has felt. Other than right still, actually good. Yeah, you can still pop and everything. That, that all feels the same. Maybe you're having some sort of weird well, lag well. during that time. Because everything else felt fine. It's just that part yeah. felt different. And to me, that feels huh. right. It's just not what I was used to from it. Mm. Is it something where you just had, haven't played it in a while? It had been two months, so technically they could have put something yeah, else in there. that's but, probably 100% it. Because I never heard it's of anyone yeah. pointing that out where at any point they yeah, switch the way the momentum transfer works. No, I don't think they switch anything other than all the stuff that actually runs properly now. <laughs> yeah, it runs really nice. It does. I've, I've, it's finally to the point where I'm not, I'm not ever frustrated with how it's running when I'm playing. Mm. You see, to me, I didn't notice any difference on that. I, the only thing I did notice is um, it seems to be... It looks a little nicer. They've cleaned up some of the edges on that. I think yeah. that it's, it, they finally did good on the 1.0. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, I will say good enough. Not just <laughs> good. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I would second that. There's still a lot to fix in that game. There's uh, a lot that they could make better. Um, I still get... Sometimes I'll get rubber banding, uh, especially right after parachuting to the ground. Um, oh, yeah. So it's, always. it's not perfect. Uh, it is... A lot better than it was, though. It's, it doesn't have the, the Fortnite level of smoothness to it yet. Yeah. If you haven't played the last couple of days, there was a recent patch specifically to address the rubber banding. Okay. Nice. Um, so yeah, you I didn't should get, get any way less of that. Because I did that's notice nice. that a lot right after the parachute drops, and that's significantly lowered. Uh, that would be nice. If they could do that to the point where if I like land on the side of a building and I actually land on that side of the building, that would be amazing. But I still, yeah. en I still enjoy <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Also, and they also uh, adjusted the um, percentage chance of getting each map, so that should be 50-50 now. I think before oh, nice. it, was okay. weighted, it was weighted pretty heavily towards the new map. That's good, and though. Now, now it's pretty much 50-50. Yeah, I've only yeah. gotten... Yeah, and everyone nice wanted so to play the new map anyway, so... Yeah, you, you could play... Sorry, Josh, go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you'd be, if a new map came out and you played for like an hour and... Well, I guess... Uh, what three hours because each map each round takes a quite a bit of time mm -hmm. <laughs> you play for three hours and never played the new map you'd be pretty pissed <laughs> yeah. yeah but the uh, ui i'm sure you guys talked about this last week i just want to say damn that ui looks nice now compared to what it was it looks a lot oh, yeah, better the new menu screen. Yeah. yeah yeah i don't know that and i i, I no know longer did have talk to about reload that. i don't think we did but i, I don't have to no. reload the menu either and i've never had the game UI bug out to the point where I needed to restart the whole game, which was yeah. a pretty common occurrence in PUBG before this yeah. 1.0 yeah, patch. Was. I would yeah. really like them to to eliminate the if I leave the game when I'm still in party that I stay in the party like that. They just need to get oh, rid of that. Yeah, like that's, it's such a weird <laughs> yeah. thing. Like I don't know why that's 
it's still there. It's, it's such a weird thing to like. It's got to be something there. to do with if somebody disconnects or something, or they're getting yeah. crashed. They like get they reconnect. In. Yeah, that's, yeah, that makes that's exactly why. I would, I would love the ability um, as the party leader to say, "Hey, um, I'm going to kick this guy." Yes. That's, yeah, that's such a yeah, that's basic a very basic fucking feature party functionality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when you're in lobby. Like, I get it. Like, maybe yeah. not when you're in game. Like, you're running around. You're like, yes, nah, this guy's out of here. But like, you know, like once you're in the actual lobby and you're standing there in a little semicircle, in your new band make... picture. Yeah, I, I do like that. You do like, <laughs> yeah. you look like a, it's like a garage band. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> the most generic garage band known to man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Playing nothing but ACDC covers. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, and the occasion and, and a couple Nirvana songs. Yeah. You got a couple. Okay, there you go. A couple <laughs> Nirvana songs. That's the big one. and uh, and Freebird. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Except for the I solo. Hate, anyway, right before I, the solo. Here's Wonderwall. I hate. <laughs> I really, really hate Freebird a lot. Do you? <laughs> I hate that song so much. <laughs> you don't want to be free as a everything bird? about no. no. I hate the solo part of it. I feel it's just fucking yeah. long. The song it's itself is okay, but the solo, like you said, is obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, anybody <laughs> else have anything else to say on Battlegrounds before I move on? No. <laughs> nah, dude. Cool. Let's see what it comes been, out that that on console. We've been talking yeah, about it a lot. Yeah. We've been talking about it a lot lately. So, uh, Binding of Isaac, <laughs> played some of that. Uh, actually, I think I only played two rounds of that. But that's one of those games I'm always going to come back to. I don't know if you guys have any of those games, but no matter how long I haven't played The Binding of Isaac, at some point I will come back to it and at least play a few rounds of it. You it's, see any it's items you haven't seen forever. yet? Yeah, I saw like a lot of items I hadn't seen yet, but I don't remember it, any of them because my memory is bad. Did they update uh, it? Oh, no, they... one, of them, one of them was the Wishbone. And it's something to do with like, Every time I take a hit, there's a percentage of getting this floating thing around me that can either block uh, block attacks or when you get close to something, it'll hurt them. Oh, nice. Like all the other stuff that floats around you from time to time with certain items in Isaac. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's like another one of those. Um, do like they the, the attack still, flies and stuff. Do they still do community updates? That's the main reason I was asking. Um, I think they they do um and i want to think the one that was scheduled near the holidays got canceled because the holidays and i don't know how much longer they're going to be doing them so yeah. that's i don't i don't know that's worth looking into i wouldn't be surprised if they stopped doing that in the somewhat near future the game's been out for quite a while now and yeah, i was going to say it's old to do. now yeah but it's, it's still awesome especially if you go all back. the way if you go back to the original, I mean, that's... Yeah, nobody plays point. the original, though. We're talking almost <laughs> 10 years, then? Because I think the original is like 09? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Has to be. I think, but, um, either way. There's no reason to ever play the original. Anytime, sure. anytime you're on Steam and you say, oh, The Binding of Isaac is on sale. If it's not The Binding of Isaac Rebirth or The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, don't even bother playing it. <laughs> these Agreed. the newer yeah. versions are not sequels they are literally the same game but better in every single way there's no oh, yeah. there's literally no objective reason to get the first game anymore the first game was just uh it was basically a wrapped up flash player right it was it was absolutely a flash game and it would lag it, it would lag and yeah. slow down and run like dog shit when you got towards the end game and they had a lot of items and stuff floating around on the screen regardless of how nice your pc was it's completely had nothing to do with uh, how it was using the hardware. It was just the software itself would just lag. <laughs> However, there is a cool uh, thing about that. When you get into really, really hard rooms, the game would slow down and yeah. be like a cheat switch. Yeah, when you're running at five frames per second, you have a lot of time to, <laughs> to anticipate attacks. But yeah. Good yeah. Yep. My name is Isaac. Uh, Rocket League played a couple. Haven't played that much this week. Um Rainbow Six Siege, I played a couple uh, with Eric the other day. I think I played a little bit with Josh, too. Did we play this week, or was that last week? It may have been last week. It's all okay. great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to say I'm falling off of Siege, but I've definitely lost that spark I had the first week we had it. Yeah, so, it's pretty I'm clear. Still, in the <laughs> I'm still playing it a lot. Like, I do yeah. my OSU or OSU warm-up and jump into it. 
yeah i think i need to start warming up or something or like only playing it when i feel focused because if i lose mm-hmm. focus and then i just start doing stupid things and that's the kind of game where if you do anything even slightly stupid you get punished and killed immediately mm-hmm. yeah. so it's very frustrating yeah i find that the osu warm-up uh helps me do the mouse movement a lot quicker and mm-hmm. osu i'll suck I won't be focused and then I'll just lose, drink more coffee, lose, drink more coffee. Okay. <laughs> then it starts to flow after like the right. third or fourth song. You so should don't... definitely um, try aim booster as well. Like OC is pretty good, especially just because it's fun. It's actually fun, but aim booster has all of like the, um, like, like snap, like, you know, like snapping to things like uh, it has like tracking where you're supposed to just click ed- as you track through like a, a little, icon that moves through the screen there's double tap so like you have to go like papa papa you know like one two one two one two on everything aim booster has everything as far as training is concerned and that's really more geared towards shooters you should give that a shot but uh osu is great for one hmm. i might have to try that then yeah aim booster is amazing you should really do I, aim booster if, especially if you want to get good like really up. good yeah if you want to get really good at shooters like aim booster is amazing yeah i i've really I been should... liking it I could use that. I think a pro- uh, another problem I'm having lately is I'm playing too many first-person shooters. What? And yeah, by that, it. I mean they all feel differently and have slightly different controls. So oh, yeah. I'm way more likely to like flub my fingers around the keyboard the wrong way and hit the wrong buttons and potato. As they right. say. Oh my god. <laughs> I, played, I played some Fortnite recently <laughs> and I was using PUBG controls because yeah. I've been playing a lot of PUBG and I just I couldn't do anything. You know what? Um, you so should try to do. Um, a lot of people try to normalize their cr- mm-hmm. uh, their crosshairs and stuff, and they do that by staring at a corner and moving from left to right, and then trying to like make sure that you're keeping your cursor on that corner. Um, try to figure out how to normalize it because all the games have different sensitivities, like as far as what's going to be optimal. So yeah. go into each game and normalize all your sensitivities to match what you're expecting. Fortnite's really weird because it actually has a different sensitivity for scope for scoping in and and you can adjust those separately so you might want to like play with that as well so when you go into like something like uh you can go fortnite you can go battle royale you can go into all these shooters and actually have the same overall shooting experience as far as like Mm -hmm. aiming is concerned granted the guns are going to all work differently but you're aiming like how you're aiming will be closer to the same that's really smart so yeah that's what that's what you see when you see like a if you see like a some like really good like CS:GO shooter guy, <laughs> shooter guy. That's their that's their official term. Um, it is. Pro, pro shooter. Up on Twitter at shooter pro guy. shooter man. Pro shooter man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go, and you find this pro shooter man, and he's gonna he's gonna go like the first thing he's gonna do is adjust all the sensitivities. Like that's the first thing they do. Mm-hmm. So get in there, adjust, normalize all your sensitivities to all your games. That'll make it a lot easier to jump from game to game. That's true. But that's so much work. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so don't do it. Really <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to continue to switch games and be frustrated instead of just like taking some prep time to fix my frustration in the future. Gonna, well, you can also just kind of eyeball it. Like yeah, you don't have to be really close to it. Just like, just being, I mean, that's all they're all doing it's anyway. It's like out, tuning. But... It's like a, it's like tuning a guitar. Like you'll probably get really good at it at some point. Just keep messing with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Adam yeah. cringed when you said that. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it's like I, what I mean by that is like you have to even it out, right? And you have to like try to get it in tune with what you're used to. You know, granted, it's not like tuning your actual guitar, obviously, but yeah. you're going to get better at it in time. Like people that tune right. guitars, like the first time you do it, yeah, it's a fucking nightmare. But like by the time like you've been doing it a while, like my dad just does it like by here. He's like, oh, do 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 do. He's like, great, let's yeah. go, <laughs> and he'll just start playing. Also, playing different guitars, like, if you're used to one guitar and you play a completely different guitar, you will physically play worse until you get used to that guitar. <laughs> Same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. I should just sell all of my games and only play one shooter. Yeah. There you go. Siege. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's there you go. Yeah. Just Siege. Just Overwatch. I don't know. I think, I think <laughs> if, Adam had, if Adam had to pick, I think it would be PUBG at this point. Uh, I don't if know. If had to pick a shooter? I don't know. If, oh, I don't know. Anyway, this is another topic for another yeah. day. I don't, know if I'm, I don't know if I'm playing it a lot lately because I like it or if I'm playing it a lot lately because it released and it's been fun lately. 
I don't know. Hey, yeah, it's the first time I've been played it in two months. So I mean, I really. But you have been playing th- something that's not quite a yeah. shooter. This this is the this is the the main thing. Uh, I bought actually a good segue. I sold my player unknowns battlegrounds uh twitch prime gear mm-hmm. for like 25 bucks and used that to fund this game which was hellblade senua's sacrifice which uh sounds like the most hardcore generic yeah. action game you could ever yep. buy <laughs> hellblade that's Absolutely. i think that's i think that's why it I, I didn't know about this game before i think that's why because every time i had seen hellblade mentioned or I don't even know if I have. If I did see Hellblade mentioned on like a Reddit thread or uh, an article or something, I'm like, oh, Hellblade something something. That's probably like a shitty. It's like a Devil May Cry game or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a like a like a shitty Soul Caliber. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it? Not uh, Soul Caliber. Uh, uh, like Painkiller. Or that's what I'm thinking <laughs> of. Yeah. It makes shitty. Me, yeah, shitty God of, of War. Thing. Soul yeah. Reaver. That's what I was thinking. That's what, Soul that's Reaver. What there you go. That's yeah. what I was thinking. A shitty Soul Reaver knockoff. I would assume <laughs> something like that. Like, not my type of game. Right. And e- even if I just look at like a screenshot or something, it's like, oh, kind of that uh, fantasy. I guess it's technically more like Norse mythology or whatever. But uh, mm-hmm. that setting, I've never been <clears> super <throat> into that either. But um, I'd never heard of this game at all. And then we were when we were doing the game awards coverage uh whenever that was a few months back um this thing won a lot of awards and it got nominated for a lot of awards and i was like oh what's hellblade it doesn't sound like something i'd like but it's winning all this stuff maybe i'll kind of look into it because it i think it won was it sound design which one did it Um, win i can't remember visual visual design yeah it was something like that it might have been visual design either way i looked it up um i watched a video um still wasn't really that into it it looked kind of cool whatever but then i started reading about what it actually is and you are playing as uh senua and she is tasked with uh rescuing the soul of her dead lover in viking hell question about that is that like a um is that gonna be does it seem like it's gonna be like an orpheus orpheus and yeah what uricity uricity i don't don't know that said that at all Oh, know. it's like it's about the guy that like he has to, he goes down into hell and tries to save his lover. He says, "Okay, here's your lover. I'm gonna you just hold her hand, but don't look back, otherwise, you know, she's oh. gonna vanish. You can never have her again." And you walk yeah. her all the way out of hell, and then you look back. Yeah, I don't know. Says, it might end up being like something that. like that. That'd be really cool. Um, that that's basically the main concept of it, and the I don't want to say gimmick, but like the theme of the game is mental illness in that your main character is dealing with mental illness um it's referred to in game as the darkness and does she believe in a thing it's called basically love? yeah probably yeah <laughs> it's coming from the rhythm of valhalla um <laughs> the darkness is basically she's got psychosis uh seems like schizophrenia and hmm. i don't know what else but it's portrayed in the game really well and not that i have firsthand experience with that but apparently the developers actually talked with neurologists mental health experts and people suffering from uh mental health issues when they were making this game because the whole game really seems to be a giant meta metaphor for mental illness and how people deal with it so you're playing this game and you're walking around and you hear voices and it's, it's this very, a very much a wear headphones, play this game. Don't, that was amazing. Don't, that was, uh, don't play with it, shitty computer speakers. Don't play it on mute. Don't play it while listening to music. Don't yeah. play it while talking to a bunch of people, uh, sit down and focus on the game and play with some nice headphones on. There is a don't, whole don't lot Discord. of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a whole lot of, um, binaural stuff there's a lot of you know you hear something it sounds like a voice coming from behind you to just in the left side just on the right side you hear you know six to ten voices speaking at once sometimes uh those so really cool. really cool the game is just <clears throat> it's just interesting like i've never played a game where you're playing as somebody dealing with something like that and it's one of those games where it's not 
it's not completely realistic within the game world because you don't know if what you're seeing is real or if you're having a psychotic break or any of that kind of thing. The I, whole thing I, might end up being, uh, maybe you didn't even do any of this stuff. Maybe at the end of the game, it was all a psychotic break, which I hope it isn't because I fucking hate when things do that. Oh, it was a dream the whole time. <laughs> but, um, You're the yeah. lover trapped in hell. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, that was amazing. I, I, I was watching your stream it and that was like, it really caught me off guard how awesome that was. It was one of the mm -hmm. coolest things I've ever heard in sound like as far as sound yeah. design in a, in a long time like mm -hmm. like as as far as like just just the uniqueness of it like yeah. it was just it was so, so good it was, it was so good the so voices the like so i've just i don't have expensive headphones they're just you know stereo headphones but holy shit did i hear shit behind me yeah, um, it was so I, good. It, I was using earbuds and I was able to yeah. pick it was still sounding really good. Granted, low quality, mm -hmm. but really good. Like you get the yeah, whole yeah. panning effect and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, love how in combat it simultaneously helps you and hurts you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you'll you'll get hit and these voices will start saying, She's dead. She's gonna die. She can't make it. She she's can't. No way. Up. She's getting out of this. You can do yeah. it. There's no way. She can do it. She just needs to get up. She's it's never strong. gonna get up. You gotta stand. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah. It's like it's everyone's so like trying to like. And there's then, a whole crowd watching you, like talking about everything as you go through it. It's just. It's so. You'll hear this this disembodied voice in your head scream behind you or evade, and you can hear yeah. it behind you. And you're like, yeah. oh fuck! And if you do That's what they so say, dumb. most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, they actually help you in combat. Yeah. So I do want to point this out real quick, and I want to get your mm -hmm. opinion on this, Adam. I watched mm -hmm. about 45 minutes, and I watched you fight this boss bird thing. Um, <laughs> and bird it boss. looked cool as fuck. Visually, yes. that entire Bird fight, man. it wasn't Harvey Birdman, attorney at law, Tom. But, it should have um, been. It really should have been. It looked, yeah. There's got to be coming. YouTube for that. That'd be awesome. But um, it looked beautiful. Um, the yep, art style they used for that was great. There was a slow sequences that looked fantastic. The entire looked, the entire game is very cinematic. It looked very there, uh, no, Monster Hunter Souls esque when it came to the way the combat went. Now my question is, how did it feel? It looked good, but how does it feel? Mm -hmm. but I know that's not the main point of the game. <sighs> yeah. The so let me just describe kind of what the gameplay is. Um, there, I would say probably, if you excluding cutscenes, there are three things that you could be doing in Hellblade. One of them is walking and listening to uh, story content, the voices speaking to you, looking around. You occasionally find these tomes that you can look at, and it'll give you like uh, the mythology of the world. You know, so and so God is the ruler of this, and blah blah blah. Completely optional, I think. But if you're into like Viking stuff. That would be super <laughs> rad for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's one part of the gameplay. You've got partial walking simulator, look around, listen to stuff. You've got partial uh, environmental puzzles, um, perspective based. You know, there's a locked door it has a symbol on it. You have to find that symbol within the game world. A person um, with psychosis. Yeah. Environment based. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you have combat. Um, I was looking at some reviews of this game before I started playing it, and some people thought that the combat seemed like it was shoehorned in for the sake of a game having combat. Um, I don't want to say I agree. Uh, some of the combat sequences did did seem kind of long, and the the combat itself controls a little clunky. It's kind of slow. Um, if you press a button, you're forced into doing that thing, and it doesn't happen right away. Right away. So, so very souls esque. Yeah, in that in that regard, it is. Um, and I couldn't tell uh, initially. I was like, "Oh, this isn't responsive at all." I'm hitting this thing and it's not doing it. Well, it's probably because I hit something else, you know, before that. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of difficult. Like it, that's more of a fighting game thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like a lot of the dark, especially like the first Soulsy experience. You're able to cancel a lot of your move, a lot of your movements. Yeah, and if they don't have any, any ability for you to cancel your movement, it makes it really feel really clunky. So that's yeah. That's... I see. I only played a little bit of Dark Souls, and I didn't get the 
I always felt like you couldn't cancel anything, and that's why it felt that way. Oh, yeah, no, you can cancel everything. This game is less like, if I input four actions, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have to wait on all of those actions. It's the second one will execute if I hit it before the first one was done. Oh, okay. Within a a certain window, obviously. Okay, okay. you, I, I guess you have to be deliberate and a little bit more precise, but it is still kind of clunky and slow. Mm. But it's still fun, and I don't think the, the game doesn't revolve around the combat feeling good. I think the combat is there to challenge you a little bit and to uh, kind of poke at you. Uh, mm-hmm. Not necessarily with a sword, but you know, as, as a player. <laughs> because there's another mechanic in this game that is a, kind of a big deal maybe is you've got this um this disease on your hand and arm um it's like it's rotting away or something and it's explained to you early on in the game that each time you die that will spread and if you die enough times that will spread to your brain and it's game over and Mm -hmm. when i say game over i mean game over i mean all of your save progress is lost. You have to start from the beginning of the game. Oh, wow. So there, there are yeah. stakes that it makes, I think it enhances the, it enhances the combat a little bit because you have to realize that there are real consequences for losing. Not just, so when you, when you lose that, that spreads is what you're saying. Like mm-hmm. each time or, you die, it spreads. If you die too many times, you have to start over from the beginning of the game. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Do you have a new game plus aspect of? Do you know anything about that? Like, because it's starting to sound a lot like um, a good Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. That's that. That's one oh, game know. that had that permadeath um, feel. Like once you died, you come back, and then you had like a whole new game almost. But mm-hmm. it had that same kind of concept. Like you have this disease in you, and that you it, like you have almost. But in that one, you had a time limit, right? Like if you die, if you took too many steps, you know, you just died. And you have to start over. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So this one's yeah. this so, one sounds yeah. like it's more it's more forgiving where it's like, okay, well, if you die, you know, <laughs> or yeah. you fail in combat. So I will say good. I I've only died twice. One of them was mm-hmm. forced to <clears throat> explain to you the whole thing. Um it's not I mean it's not really that hard. It's not a big deal. Um there is mm-hmm. you can you can change the difficulty of the combat and the options. There's auto uh normal and easy i think or something like that so it's auto that's an interesting uh, yeah difficulty selection it's it's probably it'll make the combat easier if you start dying too many times Mm, just so if somebody's not good at video games they don't have to worry about not being able to actually play the whole thing (laughs) especially (laughs) if it's story based they don't want people to get hung up on combat they do that in uncharted they do that in uncharted too and it's really just like it's a, like you, you, you like you die once, you die twice, you die three times, and it's like he's like, hey, yeah. you know what? Like maybe you should set it on easy, bud. Like yeah, <laughs> <you're> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. and a lot of games do that. But yeah, I know. actually, the more I think about it, the more I think maybe the permadeath thing isn't isn't really that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's just it's probably just there to enhance the metaphor of the whole game being about mental illness and maybe the combat's clunky because you as a player need to deal with something that you're not comfortable with and you know that kind of thing i'm sure there's some Mm. of that involved in it um really any any frustrating part of this game could be chalked up to (laughs) being a metaphor for the mental illness thing because from what i understand that's that's a huge part of the game man that's a perfect scapegoat EA is, is use, really <laughs> EA is totally <laughs> using that on their next thing. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's not just it's, loaded with microtransactions. It's a metaphor for capitalism. Right. Yeah, people, who more, people who have more money are automatically the winners. It's it's really an indictment of our current uh, American capitalist society. Mm-hmm. Well, right, no, what, yeah. what I was getting at, yeah. it's not microtransactions. Message, Your character just <laughs> forgot that you already purchased that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Amnesia too. The... It's really just to it's really just to like highlight the gambling addiction uh, issue yeah. that yeah, runs yeah, yeah. rampant in in American culture. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. It's yeah. to help take down the gambling um, you know, the casinos and stuff. The highlight. Right, yeah. yeah <laughs> They're actual so, so, social <laughs> justice warriors. We just don't realize it yet. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. It's but just Hellblade. a big satire company. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Are you sure? Is there another? Yeah, yeah. There no, another little... jab? Uh, yeah, yeah, no. I'll hold okay. them back. All right. So for the uh, the whole overview here, Hellblade is incredible. I love it. Uh, look into it. It's more artsy than it might appear at first glance until you kind of know what it's about. It's really good. Uh, play it. I'm surprised. I like it so much. I think I'll watch you play it. I don't think it's a game I'll end up picking up, though. That's fair. There's. I will pick it up eventually. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it's, it's it looks like it's yeah. got the it's almost enough walking and a walking simulator for me to purchase it. There has to be like I'm counting the steps you take in that game, yeah. and there has to be so much walking for me to buy a walking simulator. I don't want to get ripped <laughs> off. Like if I buy a walking <laughs> simulator and you like go six to seven feet, no man, I've got to get my money worth my money's worth. Half it's marathon is simulator. worth the purchase. It they really not. need to have Fitbits for games so that you can see exactly how many <laughs> steps you took before another action occurred. It, it is not. They really do. Simulator. <laughs> there are some parts of the game where you walk in the voiceovers. It is not a walking simulator. No. That right. is all. Because of the combat they shoehorned in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. All right. Got it. Who else has played games? Because I've been droning on about bullshit for a long time now. <laughs> I've played games. Uh, I've you only got one games. to really, really dive into. All right. Okay. So uh, I played World of Halo Craft Grinds of War 2. Oh, yeah. Um, Destiny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's, it's disappointing. Uh, I met 343 Guilty Spark. I mean... Uh, not 343 Guilty Spark. That's copyright infringement. Oh, and I saw my, my first Halo. Oh, wait, it's not a Halo. It's just a big-ass ship that can eat stars and destroy the galaxy. But it's totally not a Halo, guys. We promise. It's an X and not an O. Yeah. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> totally fucking different. We promise. It's absolutely Honestly, different. It, I, I did list Destiny 2 as mentioned only, but fucking destiny it feels like bungie can make one game and that's halo so they made the copyright safe version of halo and called it destiny <laughs> it's, it's not a bad game it's just so disappointing they they yeah. could have done so much more with it and it just i'm i'm glad i didn't get i'm glad i didn't throw down money for this game i'm i'm really happy uh and i'm, I'm not going to i'm not going to buy any of the expansions i'll complete the story I might dick around with some of the, the low-level raids, but that's it. Um, other than that, Mario Odyssey. I'm almost to 500 moons. Uh, Battlegrounds, we've talked ad nauseum. Fortnite Battle Royale, uh, getting your key bindings mixed up sucks. Uh, Rocket League, <laughs> I'm actually uh, playing like standard Rocket League instead of just Snow Day. Yes, um, finally. I'm trash. I, I knew it was only a matter of time. <laughs> I am so trash. I am the worst kind of trash, but... I've been playing by myself, and I realize that everybody else around me is trash too. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. So everybody, <laughs> like, like we literally there was the ball, and we would just circle the ball for you know five to seven seconds because nobody knew how to how to stop and back up and hit it. They're like, no, there's only the go button, and that's the only one you can use. It's um, like watching five year olds play soccer. <laughs> Basically, you're, easily, you're you're at the very pinnacle of rocket league fun like right now this is the best part of rocket league everything from this point on is downhill yeah <laughs> i, 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 really I disagree no, really i'm just kidding it's the a first joke. hundred hours though was pure enjoyment when you lost it's you still pure. enjoyed it when you won you enjoyed it when you jumped up and actually hit the ball you were screaming oh my god that's I amazing did it. it's yeah. amazing i, I dunked on some poor bastard he was in his goal he was there on the ground he was fucking ready man like he had backed up he had gotten in position and like the ball bounced, so I jumped up, flew at it, and just dunked him. And I was like, "Oh shit!" I threw my controller in the air. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> it was great. It was like the stupidest dunk of all time, but I did it. I made it. Now you not see, a lot of people. Uh, not Tom a lot of people break their controllers in joy. <laughs> yes. It's so much fun. Now you see, Tom got that much thrill out of it. And I get no thrill out of anything I do in Rocket League anymore unless I do like some sick almost freestyle. Other than that, <laughs> yeah. I get no joy yeah. in the game. I just play it because <laughs> I feel I need to. Oh my god. So so oh, Josh we and that. we've we've got plenty plenty of uh listeners on the podcast right now, or viewers rather. Um and RS Gamer can tell you that every time I scored a goal, I'm like, guys, I did it. I scored. I scored a goal. Guys, I scored five goals today. It was amazing. Um <laughs> I, I realize the key of Rocket League, the only thing I have to do 
is be in the right position. That's the only yeah. thing I have mm-hmm. to do to score goals. Absolutely. I just I sit back, they ball chase until somehow it floats towards the center, and then I hit it in. And that's the only thing I've been doing for the past five hours of play is just sitting back and waiting. And oh yeah, that looks like a good shot. And then I'll take the shot. That's and exactly. to, be, to be honest, if I'll you miss do most that, of the time. If if you do that for the next hundred hours, you'll probably pretty high ranked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like that's the biggest part of Rocket League. It's almost ninety percent. I wouldn't say that. That's an exaggeration, but mm-hmm. it's a gigantic part. Just like being in the right position. That's awesome. It's so cool that you're using that now. <laughs> yeah. I I realize uh, I can actually tell what I'm doing wrong, uh, which is the like the first hill, right? So when you're playing Dota and you you have no idea why you won or why you lost or why that dude killed you or why you killed that other person. Um, but when you figure out the mechanics of the game to the level where you can say, yes, I did this correctly. No, I didn't do this correctly. And here's why. Uh, mm-hmm. That's really the first pinnacle of learning. And I'm, I'm there right now. I just need to work on mechanical mastery uh, and not being a fucking ball chaser because, oh, my God, I am mechanical uh, mastery. Yeah. OK, see ball, at- hit ball, ball's life. I'm at like 1,200 <laughs> hours, and I'm nowhere near mechanical novesty. novestry. Novestry. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. It, it's, it's fun. So with me getting into Rocket League and enjoying myself, I think we're going to close down all of 72-pin connector. It's been a grand experiment. Thank you all, and good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other than Rocket League, um, I picked up a brand new game. Uh, brand I started new it last game. night. Well, okay, maybe not brand, brand new, but brand new to me. Divinity Original Sin 2. Nice. That's it's still did, really hey, new. So, did you play the first one? I did not. Okay. I didn't play any Divinity whatsoever. Just curious for backstory. I didn't play either, I, but I'm just asking. <laughs> um, for the story, it won't matter so much since this game is set several hundred years in the future. Because I, I looked, I was like, should I like watch a Let's Play of Divinity? How should I get into this? So... Uh, the first game, while there might be references and it does exist in the same world, um, there's I don't think there's going to be any characters or anything you have to worry about. I haven't run into any blockers uh, where they say, oh, yeah, here's this really important thing that you would know if you had played 200 hours of our last game. <laughs> I was going to um, say, that's probably good. That at all. I was going to ask you, these are like hardcore RPGs, right? So watching a Let's Play of the first game would have been like 200 hours of your life. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And through... <laughs> In uh, in talking to our, our good friend, Dark Soul Invader, um, I was talking to him about Divinity Original Sin 2. He's like, yeah, so there are five areas in the game, five main areas. And I've put like 100 hours, over 100 hours into the first area. So, you know, buckle up. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. So it's a big ass game. But what makes this special? I don't usually just buy giant ass RPGs for the hell of it Mm because it's a huge time sink. I wanted a game that I could sit down uh, and play with you guys where I could get involved in a world, a Dungeons and Dragons style campaign with the rest of you guys, with my wife, with whoever wants to jump into it. Divinity lets you all of this in a jump in, jump out multiplayer mode, and it works seamlessly. It is fantastic. It is one of the best jump in, jump out multiplayer modes I have played in a very long time. Really? Like that's Borderlands multiplayer for RPGs? Basically. That's basically how it works. Uh, so oh. there, there are public rooms. You can jump in and just take over a random person in a random campaign. Uh, you can set it to invite only if you don't want people jumping in. Uh, GOG and Steam, because they sell them on both platforms. I bought it on GOG. Uh, and my wife and I are able to jump into Steam games and vice versa uh, because they have mm-hmm. a server ID. You hand someone a server ID, you say, here. Uh, use this. And it says, hey, such and such wants to join. So you click allow and then you're done. It's great. So you, super fun. People, you say you get you get this guy and this guy in the party. Uh, you go and do your thing. And it's that easy. So the part of uh, the host has the party, makes the party. And when you join, you take one of the te- one of the players in the party or do you bring your character and replace someone from the party? No, That's- you take over one of the people in the party. OK. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, it, it, okay. That's probably good because otherwise you could just invite your super high level friend. Exactly. Like well, 10,000 hours in the game to carry or, you through the story. Or you end up with like six clerics and no one has yeah. any damage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Um, so yeah, the the host runs the game and runs the save game, uh, which is which is pretty cool. Um, you can all have individualized campaigns. Uh, it's I, I really want to go through this game with you guys. It is so much fun. The combat is very XCOM-esque. Um, we were getting attacked by these dudes, and I'm like, oh, I'll do some geomancing. So I did this like Avatar-esque, like lift a boulder out of the ground and punch it towards the guy. It hits him, explodes into an oil patch, and I'm, I take my mage. I'm like, oh, I'm going to fireball the oil patch, and everyone bursts into flames. Uh, oh, except, nice. Except... You- uh, my wife's a rogue, so she was trying to backstab that guy, so she also burst into flames and she so was very actually, happy. There's actually, like, interactions with the environment and stuff, it's not just... Yeah, a Every, lot of games like okay. this have that. Which what, What's oh, interesting... Yes. Okay, I have a question for you then, Tom. Have you ever played Dragon Age Origins? I have not. You should pick it up and play it. Because it's really good, it plays a lot like it's a very Boulder's Gate-esque kind of play like you're talking about you control multiple people um you can pause time and orchestrate things and then unpause it and you go it it's amazing and it's really 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 good and it's always on sale dragon age origins is one of my all-time favorite rpgs just Hmm. because of how there's like little things that happen like when you're walking through a forest like the characters will start talking to each other um and start having arguments or conversations and then you learn things about the characters it's the most alive rpg i've played in a long time and nice and it has like really cool fighting stuff like if you have like a fighter and he does a finishing blow like you like climb up on top of the dude and like stab him in the head and, like you're fighting dragons and you're like flying around and trying to mess stuff up it's really good the story's awesome you have a whole origin story that you start with it's great you should definitely pick it up it's much faster than that game <laughs> yeah and it's a solo playthrough i think i think you'd really enjoy it if you like this that much you have the same like so, oil spill kind of stuff it's as well as hmm. i will have to throw it out there as i do every time just pick up boulders gate at some point because that game is the best it, yeah. one of the best rpgs i've ever played in my life it is so fucking good still stands up and it's legit D enhanced, enhanced third rule set. It got redone too. The enhanced edition fixed all the bugs. Um, it added uh, like a whole new world area, you know, a whole new world area. And also, if you like D and D, and you go through the Boulder's Gate campaign, you can actually export your character sheet and play a D and D campaign at the level that you're Holy at. Holy shit! It's fucking awesome. Like Boulder's Gate is like legit D and D. It's Forgotten Realms. You're gonna interact with the same people that you would in a D and D campaign. But now we're on five E, so it might be a little bit different. That's three. Like Eric All right. said. So. Yeah. It, it's speaking of some, but... speaking of D and D campaigns, um, I've got to dive into this. This game gives you so much freedom that I got myself into huge trouble. <laughs> right at the start of the game um and my i also got my wife pissed at me basically this whole game is just to get my wife super pissed at me that's the only reason i play it um so we're on this boat and there's uh, a dead body and the world is not your standard oh it's lord of the Rings style you know westernized fiction uh, or fantasy um elves are cannibals because you know why the fuck not um so i was playing uh an undead skeleton elf and i'm like mm, i'm gonna numb on these bones bitch and so I go over to this dead body, and the guard's like, hey, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, nothing. And then I try to touch it again, thinking, it's an RPG. The guard's just going to repeat the same line, ad nauseum, and whatever. I'm just going to make her repeat it three times before I walk away, because the game obviously doesn't want me to do that. So I kept bugging her, and she said a different line. Like, hey, didn't I tell you once already? I'm like, oh, that's some clever coding. She'll probably say that again. And then I go up to it again, and she said, okay, really? What's the deal? And I had to pick something. Uh, Jester was one of the traits I picked, so I was like, uh, you know, it's just arranging them from, like, small to big bones, or whatever. I said something, like, stupid and shitty, and she's like, that's it, I'm putting you down. And so, she fucking pulls out, like, a crossbow and starts taking us out. I was like, what the fuck? This game lets you approach things however you want. Uh, it makes a lot of logical sense how the characters work, the writing is super expansive. Super expansive. Um, to the point that uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 comes with a game master mode where you can craft everything from overworld maps to encounters to uh, picking and placing 
NPCs controlling what they say, controlling their alignments, giving them certain stats, giving them certain items, uh, making up entire quest lines. If you wanted to build your own campaign out of this game and have your friends roll through it, you can. And you can still be the game master while they're playing. So if you needed to take control of somebody or act out a scene, you totally could do that. It is really, oh, wow. really in That's depth. super cool. That's crazy Holy crap. It is fucking amazing. Uh, I am forever super happy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it was a Kickstarter project and it had been uh, in beta for a long time. Like only the first world was released, but apparently people put hundreds of hours into the first little area out of five and then they released it. And they're like, here you go. It's done. And everybody just fucking loves it. It has gotten so many awards. It's been called the best PC RPG of all time. Um, mm -hmm. Damn. Seriously, you guys have to get this game. I want to play it with you. It is so much fun. <laughs> I don't hate combat in an RPG. It's fun. <laughs> it's finally fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that sounds amazing. That's been my big one. Uh, pick it up if you want. I picked it up on GOG for like 45 bucks. Uh, but that's all I had. I actually, I'm interested. Josh, you, uh, you got a fancy new piece of hardware there, didn't you? What do you mean? What oh, I do don't, you mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I mean. So I got a Switch for Christmas thanks to uh, a few family members chipping in together. They got me a, a Switch. And so I've been playing it. And it's, it's fun. It's cool. I just started playing certain games. So I got Mario Odyssey and I got uh, Zelda. I have not got into Zelda yet. It's just been Odyssey. <laughs> nice. And it's cool. It's nice. It's, it's, it's nice to... It, it feels... I had the Wii U before. So a lot of the same feeling. Like, I actually played the Wii U more like this than I... You know, just with the handheld than I did with um, the whole console. So it was nice. It was just like another better Wii, uh, Wii U, which is, <laughs> which is cool. Um, my Odyssey is been cool i don't know like there's something weird about mario odyssey for me <clears throat> i don't know if it was overhyped or if it was just it's just as good as i thought it would be there's nothing bad about it it's great mm -hmm. but like i don't know like what i'm trying to expect <laughs> as i go through yeah. each area like it's not that challenging um the mechanics are still kind of tough to learn so i'm learning like like you can throw your hat and you can bounce off your hat and then you know and you can keep going but apparently like i've seen people throw their hat bounce off their hat catch their hat throw their hat and bounce off their hat again and i can't do it to save my life <laughs> so, so something we'll about there and you will have to get there so the game is easy by design until the credit roll yes okay yes 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 the okay. uh so credit roll literally makes up one eighth of the content you will see okay. an eighth of the game before you roll the credits the first time. Okay, that's good. Because I'm kind of blitzing through it, and it's cool. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's cool, like, opening up all the different, like, little mechanical things. Really, really interesting. I know we've talked about it before, so I won't go too deep into it. Um, I love all the different, like, you're like, oh, I'm on a glider now. I'm riding a weird stone lion thing now. Oh, I'm a, I'm a cabbage that can grow really tall. Like, <laughs> you know, like, it has all these cool little mechanics that are fun. You know, you could be a fish, you know, who doesn't want to be a fish? Um, and it's it's cool. It's really fun. It definitely rewards exploration more so than any game I've played in a while. In a while. Because, like, the first thing I always do in a game, like, they spawn you and you're facing one direction, I always turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and there's always something there. There's you must always... have had a hard time with Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, like... You know, there's always something like, like, oh, like, what's this little tiny wall that's like, doesn't seem like it's a part of the game. You just like run up it and you keep going for like a long time. There's nothing there. And you finally get to the end. You're like, oh, neat. There's a thing here. Or there's a little glowing tail on a little stone statue. And then you can, for some reason, you can throw your hat on it and then it comes off. And you're like, okay, nothing crazy happens there. And then you just hold the button down and then a moon comes out. And you're like, what the hell? Like, what? <laughs> like, how? It's just really weird. Like, there's a whole bunch of really weird things in the game. I, re I I enjoy it. I like, I like it so far. I really do. It's just really, it's weird. I like, I want to love it, but I don't yet. And I think that'll come. Yeah, I, I think you will. So I, I had the same feelings, <laughs> and I, I especially had the same feelings after Irk told me, yeah, I, I credit rolled in eight hours. It's like, what the shit? 
I've right. never beaten a, a like that's super short for a Mario game. What what the hell is going on? Uh, until I realized that uh, Mario Odyssey doesn't have the standard uh, Mario difficulty curve where you start the game and like the levels get progressively and progressively more difficult. You've got to have uh, more mastery of the controls. In some cases, you've got to have good timing or just get lucky on some of these things to actually get your stars or shines or moons or whatever. Um, Mario Odyssey still has that same curve, except you roll the credits right near the start of the ramp up. Um, and the okay. game isn't difficult um until you get way past that point uh and i i wouldn't say that the game will ever reach like dark souls level of difficulty but i've died 10 to 15 times while trying to pick up a moon before after the credits roll um and it wasn't super frustrating every time i died it was clearly my fault um but the difficulty will come it's not gonna be super okay. hard but it'll it'll get challenging there is one spot where it's nuts um, that's uh, yeah that's, that's i think tom that's knows what i'm talking about it, it yeah, gets incredibly difficult <laughs> i don't think it's supposed to like, i mean mario games always in my head are always like they're easy they're fine they're you just get through them they're, they're easy but mario games are never easy like ever if you ever play any of the 2d platformer <laughs> marios they're always stupid hard like yeah always stupid hard if well, you've ever but, huh what, what challenge was it we did it was uh who could get the farthest in one dash one while drinking? Oh, like, it, was, it was only while a couple away I think from the team. There was only no, two of no. us that got through it. We were playing normal. We were playing it completely we? normal. And I think it was Brett and I were the only two that got yeah. through. Given we all were drinking, but we weren't like <laughs> we weren't all drunk or anything yet. Were we speed but, running that? I seem to remember no. like a blindfolded speed run that we tried. It was, pla- it was place your Brits for his birthday. The I could have sworn we did was, that facing away from nope, the TV. That was, that no, was we the played Tekken, Tekken fight. That we was played Tekken. Tekken not looking at the screen. Okay. But yeah, only two of us out of what, like seven? six or seven got through the first level of the original Mario. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I like it. I do. It's fun. Maybe we I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it to just like blow me away. It's not. It there will. yet i think it will but for now i'm just sort of like riding it out as far as just owning a switch it's cool i haven't actually just been like on it a lot mm-hmm. like i haven't been like totally obsessed with it the best thing about it is the fact that i can go lay on the couch and play video games <laughs> like <laughs> like that's great i like it's just fun to just kind of like kick back you know wife's watching a show i can pull up the switch and kind of dick around in this game um i did pick up rocket league for it of course. Nice. How does that run? Really good. Really, really, really good. And yeah. and I haven't played any like online matches or anything like that yet because I'm kind of just waiting. The one thing I did pick up, however, was a converter, <clears throat> which is super cool because I um originally when I when I got this when, you know when I was looking at it and looking at getting it, I'm like I don't want to play with a new controller. <laughs> you know, I just want to play with the play- PS4 controller that I've always been playing with. Mm-hmm. Um, so they make this little converter that will converts um, that, that allows you to play with a PS4 controller on a Switch, and I was super excited. So you plug it into the dock, and you plug it through, and it works great. You have to update the firmware, but it works fantastic. It's by Brook. I can show anybody that wants it, but hold on, input lag was horrible. Ooh. It was really. Oh. It was like it was like jump. That's a killer jump. <laughs> jump like that was the input lag it was not good and uh, um so <clears throat> what i'm what i'm wondering is that if it's going through the dock and this is more of like a tech question for our, you know our, our our tech podcast <laughs> but um you know i'm wondering if it going if it running through the dock and the usb cable to the to the ps4 uh, controller if that's causing the input lag no, or if it would it. be I doubt my, that. my TV settings, <clears throat> or if I ran it Probably directly, not. or if I did it directly from the uh, the um, handheld portion of it directly into that, if that would be faster. No, the but dock doesn't know. really do much of anything. Uh, I noticed it, that. It, yeah, it, it's lit- like from a tech per- perspective, it is an extremely uh, simple piece of hardware. It's uh, it takes USB C, it makes a couple of USB three ports in the back, along with some HDMI. Um, it honestly doesn't do 
anything really advanced. It splits um, the C to power and HDMI is essentially its main. Yes, yeah. that's right. that's really. And I, and I saw that, and that's and that's what I was wondering. Like, okay, well, you know, what is that USB port? Like, what speed is that? Is it a two point It's a three. You it's know? three. Oh well, then never mind. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. I can do. Uh, that's what I'm gonna get. Type C is only three, I believe. Three or three one. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that's what I'm gonna get. I it's it's kind of a disappointment. It might have been my TV. I might revisit it because I don't think I changed the settings because I have you know you have to go to different modes in your TV and all that crap. But yeah, I didn't switch to game mode, so I can give it a shot like that. Really, because that really does do a lot sometimes. Setting it yes. In game mode. Um. With yeah. when Tom brought Thumper over to my place, we were having some mm-hmm. input lag on Thumper that we didn't realize on other games, and mm. um, we had to adjust some settings for Thumper. Yeah, the, the issue is, is I I wasn't having the same input bag with the controller, with just the normal controls. So it's, it's just still, like kind still of a, docked a lost on the cause TV. There. Huh? Still docked on the TV. Yeah, still docked on the TV. Like when I just used the, you know, just these little, this is like this. Joy-Con. It was it was working faster, you know, on the TV, you know, just with these Joy Cons or whatever, right? Okay. Like Adam was saying. It works fine that way, but it doesn't. It's like input laggy with the other thing. So, big disappointment there. I'm, I was just really hoping. I'm, I'm going to give a, a shout out to uh, the 8 bit <laughs> though SF30 Pro gamepad because I use this to play Rocket League on my computer and I can play Rocket League on my Switch and I can play Rocket League through a remote connection on my phone controlling my computer all with this one <laughs> shitty controller. Uh, and it, magical i fucking love this i use this every day uh yeah still not as good as the pro still not as good as the pro i like it better than the pro i know it's not as ergonomic but i i like the brick controller so this is one thing that that bothered me about the switch and that is the r2 l2 whatever they're called yeah. Uh, what is it? Z Z R. Z R. Z R Z L. Okay. Yeah. Z R Z L. Z was okay. the trigger on the sixty four. Right. No. No. I understand. That's why they did uh, that. They're buttons, mm. and I hate that. Yes. Yes. They are. They are not triggers. They are actual buttons. Um. Is the same with this gamepad? No. Same with this gamepad. This. It is designed to completely emulate the Switch controller, uh, mm. and it also has modes to emulate, um, to show up as an Xbox 360 controller, but these are digital buttons. These are not uh, triggers. Dang. See, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's a shame, because you're never going to have a really great like, driving experience with a button. You know? Um, I, 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 don't able notice to... any, I don't notice any Rocket League issues, but then again, I'm not at a level where I would need to, like, slowly inch up towards something yeah i mean for me like i'm not saying that i'm anything special but i mean i i i need that for like racing games for anything i need you know i, I like to like let off like let like, especially with like a racing game where you're like like easing onto the brake easing off of the brake easing into gas and like and you're doing all that it's it's a big thing but anyway um yeah that's that's really like my only big gripe with the Switch. I'd like to get into it more. I'm excited to get into Zelda. Um, so far, it's been really fun. It's been fun. It hasn't blown me away yet, um, but it's it's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Fun. Other than that, I played um, some GTA Five. Finally finished a heist that I've been work that we've been working on for the last six months <laughs> no one's Jesus. been around to play it so Man. we finally finished it it was amazing on to the next one if anyone wants to jump in on some gta let me know we've been really enjoying it but that's been all really as far as games are concerned uh what about you eric you've been uh playing some video games from what i hear well some i've been flying and with flying means i played a lot of stardew <laughs> Um, I did, however, today uh, reinstall uh, what's it called uh, Civ Five. So um, Eli has never played it. He got it. Uh, so we was playing an online match. Yep, still nice. as slow as I remember it. He'll love it. <laughs> Holy fuck! So um, nice. yeah, was doing some of that. Uh, Rainbow. One little add-on on top of everything Adam said. I got a legendary skin, baby. It's my third one. <laughs> there's Dang, guys i hear that's lucky yeah, yeah there's guys in the, the discord. other rainbow six guys said that you are 
incredibly lucky to have three of those at this point yeah i'm level 41 i have three there's a guy in there 90 that has zero so um <laughs> yep oh wow i will take it um <laughs> other than that yeah just that's it osu uh, one thing i didn't say earlier um i got tired of playing the same fucking japanese j-pop stuff i don't mean that to be uh sound like a brick but it's the same type of music and I like J-pop, but not over and over and over again. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with playing just Butterfly on DDR machines at the arcade. Nothing wrong with that. That's the only, okay, one of two acceptable songs. The other one is basically anything by Captain Jack. <laughs> but like, yeah, I got some Disturbed on there, Little Lincoln Park, some Blink-182, like all over the place so I can oh, change it up. And some of those, even on normal, those charts get really quick. So you're snapping all over the place, <laughs> which is nice because that's what I want it for yeah. is a warm up. Yeah. But really, that's all I've been playing. Um, short week, short time. I'll keep going on the stuff I've been doing. But um, we do have a little bit of news and then we're going to have a little fun at the end of this. Um, we got a couple headlines. PUBG, their top priority for 2018 is it to make it, the game competitive? And crash free for oh, yeah. being a one dot oh <laughs> crash free feels like that should already be a given. No uh, way, a game that's, that's crash free. No way, like you'll never do that. Like any game I have has crashed. <laughs> things are just gonna crash. It's just what what things do. Games yeah. crash. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nintendo has delayed the release of their high capacity cards to 2019. I think that would essentially double the size of a cart from 32 gig to uh, 64. That's being pushed. This is actually here. kind of a yeah, kind of a big deal for some of the bigger games that want to release on the Switch. Because right now, um, Nintendo is saying, yeah, you either find a way to compress it down to fit it onto 32 gig cards, uh, or release it on the eShop and hope people have a big ass memory card. So uh, developers mm. aren't really thrilled about this because you know 2019 is a it's a bit away, and it's Nintendo. So you know 2019 and Nintendo years basically means 2022. Yeah. Well, at least it's yeah. not Valve time. And then another run. And That's true. <laughs> but an example of that where, you know, Nintendo time, this fall, the uh, paid app <laughs> for the internet or the online gaming was supposed to release for Nintendo. It's supposed to have all these different apps integrating into it. Well, we're at the very end of the year and it still only has Splatoon. So yeah. um, they are pushing back their paid online service to the fall of 2018. That is a one-year delay. This is awful. This app, I think I hit on it a couple <sighs> podcasts ago. I opened it up. It's barren. It is seriously only Splatoon, and no one uses it for Splatoon. So yeah, I I, I yeah. went into a lot of the a lot of the eShop and all that stuff. I, I'm really confused by this whole thing. Like, what's What's really going on? Like, are they trying to make it a paid service? What what exactly is this? The whole yeah, they they are they they were trying to basically do their own version of something like Xbox Live or PSN, um, and as as you saw with you and I adding friends codes literally right before the podcast, Nintendo has no fucking idea what they're doing. I don't want to dive into this because we've covered this ad nauseum when the Switch came out and Eric and I got one. Uh, but, you know, the fact that we had to read off 12 character or 12 digit friend codes to each other on a mm -hmm. chat is just fucking retarded. Yeah, that's pretty I, crazy. I'm I'm not at all surprised that Nintendo is delaying their online service. And frankly, if they were re to release it like this, no one would fucking buy it. The only reason you would buy it is to play Splatoon. And honestly, that's not a good enough reason to pay for this. I think it is. 20 yeah. bucks a year to be able to play it, I would do it. I'm not going to give them any money to reward that kind of sh shit show. I can build a goddamn online service better than that, and I'll charge you 10 bucks a year. The difference oh, is you can't Tom play Net. Splatoon without it. Sign up now on 72pinconnector.com for TomNet. <laughs> and then, Tom, I'll let you take this last little thing. Yeah, okay. Um, so... A Kansas man has been killed in a swatting attack related to Call of Duty. Um, there were two players uh, squabbling over a, uh, a wager they had made of uh, 
Hold on to your pants, boys. It's a big number. A buck fifty wagered match. <coughs> um, yeah, yeah. So buck uh, fifty, and they they got into it. And some guys like, yeah, well, I'll fuck you up, IRL. I'll send the SWAT team to your house. And the guy's like, oh yeah, fine. Here's my address. Dude gave the the other guy a random address in Wichita, um, and then. The other guy contacted someone who apparently does swatting as a service where he basically takes money and swats people online, you know, calls in hostage situations and everything else. So um, this random Wichita guy sees a bunch of flashing lights outside outside of his door, opens his door and is promptly shot by police. Uh, He later died. So, yeah, this this whole situation is completely fucked up i'm not going to release the name of the swatter uh the people squabbling um or anything like that because we don't really need to give them any more attention than they're already getting um but uh the police do have a suspect he's in custody and frankly this whole situation is ridiculous and it's not even the first time this has happened there are plenty of videos even you know live vods on twitch where you can see somebody getting swatted while they're playing a game, live streaming on Twitch, because reasons, because, you know, impotent gamer rage or whatever. I, I don't yeah. fucking get this. The whole thing is fucked know, up. I didn't even know swatting was a thing. Like, I, I had seen yeah. this headline earlier, and it said, you know, Kansas man killed in swatting attack or whatever. And I was like, what, what does that mean? What is mm-hmm. swatting? I didn't yeah, know yeah. Like a, a we, we can't... So there, there's a lot, and we're not going to go into politics. There's a lot to be said for uh, police and why this guy was shot for opening his front door. Uh, we're not going to go into that. But the fact that you can rage so hard on a video game to fucking call in fake hostage situations and get somebody killed over it is fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah. hey, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus bit. fucking Christ. Completely when, just a shitty person. When my mother told me that I was going to turn into a raving murderer because I was playing Mortal Kombat, I didn't realize that this would be our future. <laughs> like, uh, apparently, apparently playing Call of Duty does turn you into a murdering psychopath. Uh, I had no idea. Um, <laughs> just betting on it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, there you go. Just betting on it. Don't, don't ever bet on games, guys. That's, that's the thing. Gambling will get you killed. Yeah, uh, take uh, that yeah, note, yay. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's anything more to say on this. It's just, it's completely fucked up and, and needless. Um, okay. But we do have some, some happier news. Yay! Yeah! Uh, of the year. Blank of the year. Our, our favorite stuff, and least favorite stuff of the year. We're just going to go around and name it off. So I'm going to start with Josh. Josh, out of all the postcast games we have played... This year, 2017. What's your very favorite? My very favorite postcast game? Mm, I think it was probably Rocket League for me. Either Rocket League or Grand Theft Auto, but I'm going to lean towards Rocket League. Mainly because our whole Discord plays it. Everyone plays it. Um, We got everyone in. Everyone rotating through a 1v1 lobby. Just bullshitting, talking crap, (laughs) fake announcing everything. It doesn't get more fun. I don't really have much more fun in Rocket League than doing that. I love the announcements. I think <laughs> we had one better than that. Only one, because Rocket League was really fucking good. But Dirty yeah. Bomb. Dirty Bomb that was, was mine. amazing. I fucking love Dirty Bomb. That's my favorite postcast game that we have played. We, <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were working as a team. We, yeah. None of us had played this before, and we just mowed everyone down. It was, it was great. a good one. It was all, a good one. We all went in expecting garbage, and the game was actually yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, uh, it was so free much to play, fun. Whatever. And we had a quick question time. for you on that: Is did yeah. anyone play Dirty Bomb after the post nope, game? I did. Yes. <laughs> nope. I did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not even I played a little. at least three more times. Okay, after okay. that first week, who played Dirty Bomb? <laughs> I played two weeks after, and oh, I, yeah. I played a month after. And then I stopped. Yeah. You need people. <laughs> you have to play with a team what about, on that. Yeah, yeah, I th- yeah. I playing with that. randoms on Dirty Bomb is bad. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Adam? I think, yeah, I think mine was. Uh, I think Jackbox. Oh yeah, we played a be... couple times. Specifically, Jackbox Three. I think I liked more than four. Uh, yes. Jackbox Three in chat. Jackbox yeah. was. Jackbox was just the a t-shirt lot of fun. game. I love oh, TK. TK. I've never laughed oh, so hard God. in my life. 
Jackbox is such. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really when you get into the hive mind that is uh our community <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's on ridiculous. it's on par with cards against humanity but there's more creativity because you have to type them in <laughs> oh yeah and there was actually a good honorable mention out there by bivens um mount your friends there wasn't a whole oh, lot of yeah. people on for that <laughs> that was hilarious that was, so that was so stupid fun, fun. yeah mount okay. your friends is amazing so how about this one solo play the single player game you guys had the most fun with this year. Adam, I'm throwing this one to you to start. Well, um, I'm doing this as more of a game of the year thing. Like games are actually released this year. When I was trying to think of this one, I would have to say Resident Evil 7 was, was the best game of 2017 for me. Personally, of the ones I played. I didn't play a lot of games that released this year. This year, I generally tend to play things a year or more after they release, unless they're like cheap on Steam and stuff. But, uh, <laughs> no, Resident well, Evil Seven was awesome. It was just, it was a great experience the whole way through. Um, I actually completed it. Uh, it brought a dead series back to life. Uh, it was just good. It was really good. And that was part of that powerhouse early quarter of the year. The year. Yeah, it was. all of these yeah. games were coming out and they were just so mm -hmm. fucking good. It's been a good year. And I, uh I I would runner up maybe Hellblade once I'm done with it. It's it's uh that's pushing the hmm. that's pushing the holy shit I like this game buttons. I think for me my favorite solo has to be Horizon Zero Dawn. That game yeah. is gorgeous. The I expected story, that from you. <laughs> that story yeah. is so good. I'm actually sense. playing it again. It's just as so much, fucking good. Yeah, as much acclaim as that game has gotten, I'm not surprised. What yeah. about you, Tom? I mean, I see you yeah. going one of two ways here. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know what I'm gonna pick. I'm I'm gonna pick Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, everything. So <clears throat> Nintendo built Odyssey uh, with um, surprise in mind. They they picked one word. They built an entire game around surprise. Uh, with Zelda, the word was adventure. In holy shit do you feel like you're going on an adventure um <laughs> the the game will say hey it's up there go up there that's where you need to get your your next shrine and you're like oh shit okay well i could just climb this mountain oh fuck it's cold up there how, how do i how do i keep warm oh i'm gonna go to the shop i'm gonna buy some clothes oh no i need money uh maybe i'll just go pick some peppers to make some spicy beef maybe i'll just carry around a torch holy shit i found a fire sword and if i hold it It'll keep me warm outside. Maybe I'll just keep building fires and I will just float to the shrine instead of actually trying to walk there through the snow. It lets you approach all of these problems in ways that make complete logical sense to the player. And it, it doesn't ever force you down a road you don't want to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild gave me the most freedom I have had in video games in uh, forever, basically. Um, I have I've chopped down trees and used them as bridges. I've chopped down trees and rolled them down hills to to kill enemies. Um, I have completely broken puzzles by turning my controllers upside down. Like Breath <laughs> of the Wild was just so much fun in so many different ways. I've got to give it my my solo play game of the year. That's really cool. I, I I I didn't play a lot of games that actually released this year, and I didn't play through a lot of games that released this year. I played Resident Evil, I played um, you know Horizon Zero Dawn, but I actually never finished those, and they didn't for some reason something just I I didn't well I mean Resident Evil is too scary. I'm not going to finish that game. Um, <laughs> but, you're saying you didn't feel like pissing your pants, so you so, didn't play Resident yeah, Evil. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the only reason. I, I'll probably no, I won't. I'm not even going to drink you off. I'm not going to play that game. It's too scary. <laughs> uh, the only game that released this year that I actually played through that I keep going back to is Mario. And even though I got it just recently, I yeah. do go back to it regularly. And this is during a time when I'm trying to grind through, like, you know, I'm trying to grind through in Rocket League. I'm playing mm -hmm. other games. A whole there's a whole variety of games. So um, what what about games that didn't release this year? What 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 was your favorite uh, single player game that you played this year? Yourself? It's it's a really close one between two of them, and one of them was a gift from one of you guys, and the other one um, was a gift from my wife. And one of them was Bayonetta for sure, without a doubt. <laughs> it was way better than I thought it would be. It's a blast. The other one for sure 
is probably Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I never nice. thought I'd play a game like that. Nice. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever enjoy a rhythm based game. I'm not yeah. a rhythm based game guy. I don't like that. And I don't uh, even get no rhythm. I got I, no rhythm. I partic- I don't even really particularly like roguelikes that much. And as much as that's going to be like a, you know, I just don't play yeah. a lot of roguelikes. Um, but I loved Crypt of the Necro Dancer. It was amazing. So that those would be more of uh, of really my my highlights for the year as far as best solo play game. Okay, well let's start with you because I know you got something for this one. Group play. So a multiplayer game you were playing this year that just fucking hooked you. Oh, best. Okay, that's got to be for me. It's got to be Fortnite. Um, it's, Battle Royale it, or Fortnite? Fortnite. Ooh, good I, I kind of have to split it because. Fortnite itself, they're, I mean, they're both way better than I thought they'd be. And not a lot of people talk about the main game. The main game is really good. I have a lot of time in that game. And it's really deep, and there's a lot to be said on that. As far as Fortnite Battle Royale is concerned, it's fast-paced. It's, it it kind of shaves off all the fluff that I don't like about other Battle Royale games. It's faster. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's denser for me. Um, mm-hmm. that, again, I love PUBG. I think it's great. But, you know, I, I think Fortnite really stood out for me as far as just, like, kind of catering to what I enjoy in both avenues. Nice. What, what about you, Adam? I know you've, you've probably, um, the other one you played a lot of. Yeah, um, I would probably go, because it was technically released this year, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Uh, this was the first Battle Royale game I've ever played, actually. Uh, I haven't played any others. I never got into the calling. I never played... Uh, daisy or any of the arma mods or any of that stuff uh probably have to go with that as far as just what's hooked me the most immediately maybe rainbow six siege which wasn't released this year but that just immediately grabbed me that was intense yeah and even though i'm kind of falling off a little bit i'm still i'm still loving that game and i still want to play it more um i'm with i'm with adam online uh, PUBG, not only did it get me to buy an early access game because fucking everyone was playing it all at once and I wanted to play games with somebody, um, <laughs> but it, it surprised the shit out of me when it actually 1.0'd uh, in time mm. for the end of 2017. Mm. Uh, it plays really smooth now. It's not perfect by any means, but it is so much fun. I thought I had seen all I needed to see with games like DayZ because I tried to get into that back in the day. Uh, PUBG has really just perfected the formula. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, for me, it's going to be a little bit of a weird one. Uh, Splatoon 2. That game okay. got me to like actually struggle through the shitty party up ability of the Nintendo phone app. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I, I battled through <laughs> their shitty interface to play this with people was really good the salmon run feature it's only on certain times but when you get in it with people you know and you're of course on discord because fuck their app it's really Mm. really good (laughs) and they keep releasing more content for free 2-0 released it's it's just really fucking solid and hey who, who doesn't like being a squid kid that's true hey 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 you're not a squid kid you're either a squid or you're a kid Make your choice. If you're, if you're some pussy squid running around all the time, you know, fuck you, man. You gotta be a kid. Man, you can't get time me. You be can't typecast me. I am what I, I want to be. I just did. You're a squid. I know you. I think this octopuses is- are cooler than squids. <laughs> you know what? It's right, a yeah, weird... That's not even a contest. I got an <laughs> honorable mention, and everyone's gonna cringe, but... Um, oh. Uh, Dark Souls 3 I played this year and I played with Tom yeah, and I've been what? having a really good time with it and I and that series will get <laughs> picked back up I really 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 want to finish that as much of uh, a joke that's been I mean you can't argue if the game is just good yeah I mean, yeah, I mean <laughs> I, I've, I've really Sorry, I've, it's really really got me back into uh, Dark Souls mm-hmm. 2 was such a letdown 3 is really yeah something great i i never expected after how much i would love dark souls one and i never expected to love dark souls one as much as i did um i never thought that two would just let me down i never thought i would actually give up without actually completing the game but it was yeah. just bad 
Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> it just, yeah, we won't go into it. Anyway. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> Enough Dark Souls for now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. How about this is a little bit of a weird one. Which game surprised yeah. you the most that you liked and maybe didn't think you would? Oh, oh me. I got this one. Dark Souls. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, there we go. No, I've never actually played through a Dark Souls game. Um, I don't oh. <laughs> As far as games released this year, uh, I did a, I did a uh, lost and found episode of for a game called Ballistic, which I don't even oh. know how I got. I don't remember how I got it. Apparently, it was released this year, um, <laughs> but I was just expecting some crappy game, you know, random game I never heard of, and it actually turned out to be a lot of fun. I had a good soundtrack. And I had a lot of fun with it that night. I played it longer than I thought. That soundtrack uh, was awesome. Yeah. It was. was super fun. It was super simply. cool to watch. Yeah. And as far as games uh, that weren't released in 2017, the most surprising thing I think was One Shot, uh, 12 Games at Christmas from Josh. Um, I would have never, ever bought that game. <laughs> there was nothing about that game that looked appealing until I played it. And it was like really, really <laughs> intriguing and it was unique. Uh, it was that was interesting that was surprising for me that's cool that's really cool what about you tom you got your one uh yeah and it was this is only surprising because the reviews i read of this game uh said it was super repetitive that the controls were a little weird that wasn't gonna like it it seemed really nitpicky but nitpicky is kind of what you get into when somebody makes a Mega Man clone uh 20xx i bought it on a oh, whim yeah. Just because I, I, I'm dying for some new Mega Man content, man. Like, it's killing me. I need that music. I need the platforming groove. I need the run and gun. Uh, and 20XX was... It didn't have the most content by far out of any roguelike I've played. It is pretty repetitive. But every time I play it, it's just fun. Uh, it controls well. Uh, the power-ups are dull and boring but that's i don't play Mega Man games for the power-ups i really don't i play it for the challenge and holy shit it delivers that in spades especially on the higher difficulties um i when i don't know what to play and i've got 10 minutes to knock something out i will play 20xx uh definitely most surprising game for me i think for me was actually another really good postcast game we did um gigantic um, I went into that thinking, oh, this is just going to be another MOBA kind of thing. And I really like Gigantic. It is more of just a hero on hero MOBA. I actually ended up buying the full game after the postcast and actually booted it up last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and was playing a mm -hmm. couple games of it. That's I mean, cool. That really got me on that. Um, for me, I think the biggest surprise was probably secrets of reticon it was something i did for a um uh for one of the uh what is it called lost, um, and, found. lost and found exactly i don't even know where this game came from i don't even understand what it is but you're a bird guy um the ending was the weirdest ending out of any game i've ever played i don't understand what i was doing and i don't get the ending uh if anyone wants me to spoil it for them let me know i will it's weird <laughs> um but as far as the gameplay was concerned it was really good it was really fun all the way through um birds are dicks puzzles are fun as a bird <laughs> <laughs> life lessons right. ladies and gentlemen birds are dicks but bird puzzles are the bomb <laughs> it's totally true I'm nice. telling you. <laughs> birds are dicks geese are worse yeah yes. that's probably so this is, this is true <laughs> <laughs> right, so we we've had some uh, nice happy stuff Let, let's get to some of these sadder things here oh um okay. there were a few disappointments this year um i think we all have a few uh tom you want to give us probably one of your biggest disappointments of this year yeah yeah so i was i was thinking about this and uh the answer is not what you expect um it's res infinite because never before oh. have you been laid out just a, a blueprint, a perfect blueprint of, holy shit, you have a VR headset. What game would make perfect sense in VR? And you can do it right. And it just it requires so little effort to pull this off and make people happy. And then you launch it and they do literally everything wrong. Nothing is done <laughs> right in that game. And it is just 
fucking broken. Uh, <laughs> Res Infinite in VR is my biggest disappointment of 2017 because it has so much goddamn promise behind it. And it was just trash. Res Infinite as a game playing on a 2D screen is fine. Res Infinite as a VR experience is utter dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Adam? Did you have, what was your biggest disappointment of the year? Uh, I was trying to think of this one earlier and I think I came across something and it's a game I forgot about, which kind of makes sense because if I didn't like it that much or didn't continue playing it, that it would kind of just escape me. And that game is The End is Nigh. Uh, this was from the same developers as The Binding of Isaac and Super Meat Boy. And I thought, oh, why wouldn't I love this game? It's, you know, Super Meat Boy was a huge hit. I've played more Isaac than most other games. Uh, let's, let's buy his new game. It actually it was a 2017 release. And I played it uh, for about an hour and never played it again. And it's mm. not that it was bad. I mean, it's a well-made game. It's good for what it is. But I just... I was I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. I thought I would play it a lot and I haven't touched it since. It was surprising, but yeah. What about That's you, Josh? You got you any? Yeah, I do. But it's weird because it's not a game I played. It's a game I watched. And hmm. it was one I was I was looking at for a little bit before. Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah, you got it. No, uh you didn't get it. <laughs> it's actually Hello Neighbor. It was fairly recently. Oh, uh, yeah. It looks so cool, and the concept was really neat, and how it's supposed to work is really, really cool, but they just... It's weird that they made it too hard. They made it too obscure, too weird. It was too mm -hmm. buggy. Everything about it was just not done. And it sucks, and it was kind of disappointing like that they purposely add like levels of artificial difficulty that were way higher than I've ever seen in like a puzzle game before. Um it it, it was kind of disappointing in a way because I like the style and I like the concept. I like the idea of it being a puzzle horror in the daytime. You know? Yeah. Like all of that stuff was working really well for it and I thought that it was gonna be something really special. But yeah it just uh just wasn't <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. I think my most disappointing game of the year was honestly something I thought Tom was going to bring up Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, yeah. That game from the beta, I was ready. It played great. It was beautiful. It was and, fun. And then I had the a good time with it. Storm started. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Which. I'll actually say it was uh, quite the shit storm. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Which I think leads was... to the perfect segue of. Um, what is your biggest fuck you of this year? The, my biggest fuck you this year is EA and Battlefront 2. Uh, <laughs> because you, you, take, no you way. take the Star Wars license, right? It's, it's a fucking gimme to make really compelling, good games. You've already got the art direction. You've got the universe. You've got sound design. You've got graphics. You've got everything prepackaged for you to make a wonderful experience. You've got the people who make Battlefield games. You've got dice at the helm. They're ready to craft you <laughs> this giant, open, expansive world. And everything technically in Battlefront 2 is poised to perfectly take over the market with the best Star Wars multiplayer game we've ever seen. And then EA just shits all over it. Just <laughs> fucking ruining this great promise of the game. And for what? To just squeeze gamers like they're fucking, fucking made out of money to eke every little drop of monetization you can out of them? EA completely fucked this game and probably, in all expectations and all reality, fucked this entire series for the rest of all time. If you played Battlefront back in the PS2 era, it was a fantastic series and people loved it. Battle, uh, Battlefront 3 was something people were clamoring for for the longest time. Uh, they shit the bed with the first one and then they were ready to bring it back and right all their wrongs. They admitted they had fucked up real bad. And then they fuck up even worse somehow. <laughs> fuck you, EA. <laughs> fuck you, Battlefront 2. Fuck all this. This is sh so fucking shitty. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's, um, that's really the only thing I can think of. Same thing for me. 
Yeah, but with Josh, uh, you have any? much less enthusiasm as Tom. Yeah, same, same boat. <laughs> so I have a different but same one. It's another mm-hmm. fuck you EA because EA was on a roll this year, but I'm going much earlier in the year when they shit on another franchise that was highly revered as one of the best franchises ever made. And then they released Mass Effect Andromeda, and it was a fucking oh, yeah. piece of oh. shit. I forget. Yeah, how could we forget about that? To the <laughs> I, point, do, I do when, have something. When they keep just going, going. decide that, yeah, you know what? We're not going to patch the single player at this anymore. We clearly have story arcs that are going to be DLC that we're not going to deliver on because you know what? Mm-hmm. We fucked up and we don't want to spend the time to fix this goddamn mess we made. So you, selfishly, you know- I've never played a Mass Effect game. But I'm glad that bombed so hard because I really enjoyed all those gifts of the shitty animations bugging out in the first <laughs> release. <laughs> the fucking T poses everywhere. For a couple of days. Yeah. Like, I, 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 you know, a game has to be really bad. You know, you have to fuck up so bad when one of your landmark franchises is dead, is killed off, is completely canceled because of one game. Not even yeah. Assassin's Creed has fucked up that bad. That's yeah, Assassin's bad. Creed's actually kind of coming back. But. I, I, I yeah, have, uh, um, yeah. I, I have one that actually ties into biggest disappointment, and it actually mm-hmm. ties into EA too, which is great. And I think some <laughs> of our uh, some of our viewers, so well, really one of them in particular, Bivens, it's been another year without this game, another year, and you still For have speed. forums, you still have you have whole websites devoted uh, to to revitalizing this and it's not coming back and it's another year it's coming to a close and we don't have one skate four what the uh, fuck where is skate uh, four <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> we, you called it before we even <laughs> another year this is bullshit this is bullshit yeah that's never gonna happen ever yeah it's it's so disappointing it's it's dead Okay. Just, I don't even want to skate for at this point. I just want like a port, just like they're saying. A port is fine. Just take skate the one, skate two, or three, like any of them. One the of close, them. the closest thing to realistic skateboarding game because you had Tony Hawk, which was just ridiculous and over the top. And, and I'm sure Skate had some of that stuff too, but it wasn't. It was a little bit more grounded in reality. Skate. Well, there is was to another Forza, game. What Tony Hawk is to Need for Speed. No, exactly. Well, uh, it's, exactly. It's very close to that, but maybe not quite a Forza. Thrasher, but. Skate, and Destroy was a direct competitor with oh. Tony Hawk and never made it. And it was made by Rockstar, and it was really good. Oh. And hmm. it and you sh- and it played like Skate, but it didn't have the same like flick controls that mm-hmm. Skate kind of did. It didn't have a weird, weird hilarious. That's what but anyway, it. so I'm looking at this one game called Session. Session, don't fuck it up, please. Please do a good job. No pressure. Did it ever get fully <laughs> off topic? Did that ever get fully backed? What session? Yeah, isn't that on a Kickstarter? You can you can download it and play it right now, and it's they're still updating it. It's just in like a super alpha mode. It works okay. It looks all right, but it's not. It is not a. It's not a skate replacement. Not yet. All right. And Maybe I, somebody else will come along. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll do one more. And this one, I think I know everyone's answer. And let's hate on ourselves here. What was the yeah. shittiest <laughs> postcast game we did this year? Oh my Super Bowl. God! Super Bowl! <laughs> it was so bad. It yes. was so, and it, it had the promise, right? We were all so excited for Super Bowl because holy shit, it's first person. It's gonna be like that that fucking uh, <laughs> ball game in Unreal Tournament 2004. It's gonna be like Rocket League, but as an FPS. And no, it was just garbage not even the <laughs> gameplay was just garbage the menu the menu was garbage by the far the garbage. worst menu i've seen in my entire life the the worst. Was literally garbage. every <laughs> part of that game was just hot fucking steaming garbage every part yeah it <laughs> got really into it. super bowl <laughs> It was, looked really uh, cool, had so much promise, but then you realized something that was a real big oversight. Rocket League, the mechanics of getting to the ball and hitting it the way you want is a challenge. In Super Bowl, you got a mm-hmm. gun. So if everyone's up, just shoot it over everyone and you score. So yeah, boring. that's it. That's the whole thing. The whole game. Yeah, we right fucked there. up. <laughs> we, we totally fucked up on that one, fellas. Just throwing that Yeah, it was, 
it was it was mm-hmm. bad. We we made a really really bad choice. Luckily, nobody actually paid for it. Super Bowl, I believe, to this day, still is a free game uh, mm-hmm. and in early access. We should point out. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we will we will never be going back to that ever again. Even if it's like eSport of 2021, never going back to it. Never. Also, not even. <laughs> Quick segue before the rundown. Um, mm-hmm. For tonight's postcast game, we will be doing Moonbase Alpha. So it's like a one <laughs> gig or two gig download. So pick it up. Uh, this is going to be goofy as shit. So uh, just get in, have some fun. Um, but yeah, hopefully next year we don't have any game close as shitty as Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, we will. we will. We can't make that promise for uh, our viewers. I know, we're, we're playing. We're playing Moonbase Alpha. It might be. Yeah, we're starting. We're ending the year with Moonbase Alpha. I think we can. <laughs> no, we'll see. We can go lower. We can go lower. We, we promise try. you, we'll have a worse game than Super Bowl. Just, just out of hilarity. We'll, yeah, we'll figure we're gonna it try out. here. Yeah, here in about <laughs> 20, 30 minutes stops. Yeah. Well, <laughs> goddamn it, guys. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's just go ahead and do this rundown. Get this uh, shitty postcast going, or fun postcast going. However you want to look at it. Yeah, but. Yeah. If you are tired of the same old bullshit we talk about, Rocket League, Switch, Dark Souls, whatever the fuck you think we drone on about, you should let us know at 72 PC Podcast on Twitter. Give us some fun stuff, no problem whatsoever. Um, if you're watching us live, you can go to our YouTube page and look at any of the content we have there as well as all of our prior episodes. And you can just find us with 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. If you're already there, you should come to our Twitch page of twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector and watch us live 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, And then also we have this beautiful audio podcast. You can always pick up on any of your iTunes, Google Play stores, or you could always go to 72 pin connector.com, pick up your RSS feed. And uh, with that, Tom, with that, we have, I think we have some Tom that, that it's yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Bivens and Prototrix for their subscriptions. Uh, it is your funding that will eventually buy my yacht in the Bahamas. Thank you very much for your subscriptions. We greatly appreciate it. We are now a whole five dollars closer to getting that boat. <laughs> yacht, more yacht. specifically. It's not a, yacht. It's not a, a yacht. Large a yacht. Yeah, to yacht. Have a pool that accommodates a smaller yacht. Yeah. <laughs> That's living yachts. But anyway. <laughs> With that, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Um, any of you guys got anything else you want to throw in there? Nope. Have a good New Year's John Madden. celebration. Oh, yeah. John Madden well, stuff. Yeah. With that, have a great okay. New Year's, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So next Happy year, New Year's. Happy and next year, next year, next time, whatever it is, game on. See you, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs>